course, we have to talk about the pandemic because sooner or later, every conversation becomes a little bit about the pandemic, which is hopefully knock on every piece of wood there is. Um, moving into, if not a, moving into a new phase, if not, you know, on its way out. Uh, hopefully this won't age terribly and there'll be a, a new variant spiking. Um, but this has dramatically changed everything. It's not, not just that it's changed publishing. Uh, that combined with shipping shortages, boats of books sinking to the bottom of the ocean, all kinds of, of crazy stuff going on. Where do you see publishing at right now? If there's a glut of submissions, is this a good time for authors to be submitting? And then how do you think this will change publishing going forward, knowing that you can't tell us the future, but just your best guess would be fine? I'm going to try and keep the answer short, but I wrote about this actually Publishers Weekly. They have um, an almanac of book publishing the, on the industry. They keep their finger on the pulse every year. They just kind of do a state of the industry kind of book. And they asked me to write the chapter on literary agents. And naturally, they asked me to talk about the pandemic. And I talked about this in one other interview. I think the magazine is called Lit Mag. They're a relatively new magazine. They're on like their fourth issue. It interviewed me and, and Morgan Entrican, who he uh, is the publisher of uh, Grove Atlantic. So they asked the same thing. And basically what I said was early on in the pandemic, what happened was uh, a number of interesting things. Um, people were reading more than ever, which was great because they were at home. They had time to do that. They were writing more than ever. Um, they were buying books, but then stores shut down. So they were had to buy their books online. Barnes & Noble had a lot of store closures. Publishers were operating then at limited capacity as a result. And people were buying books on Amazon, but then when they, their book orders were delayed, what happened was um, they were turning to audiobooks and eBooks. And so there's a big uptick in those. Um, there was a push in the industry, I think like James Patterson and some other authors were behind it in saying books are essential, which, yeah, they are. I love books. But in a pandemic where people are dying, um, medicine, food, water, that's essential. You know, the book, you know, might not save a life in the same way. And so Amazon decided to prioritize essential items over books. And so books were further delayed. Uh, to that point, up until that point, people were reading a lot of uh, paperback classics, like suddenly, oh, I have time to read these massive tomes like War and Peace or Tales of Genji. Um, and um, so that, that kind of changed. There was a shift there. And then what also happened at that time was early on in the pandemic, there was an article in Publishers Weekly. They interviewed like a few agents from other agencies and asked them, what are you thinking of doing? given the start of this pandemic. And a lot of these agents said, well, we're going to wait it out. It's probably, you know, maybe this thing will be over in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and so, or, been nice. <laughs> or it could be a couple months, you know, but we're going to hold off on submissions is what they said. I read that and I thought, this is great. I'm going to be submitting books to publishers when my competitors are holding off from doing that because they just created a huge opening for me. I've seen that before where convent, like for instance, conventional wisdom always held in the publishing industry that you never submit a book in August and you never submit a book between Thanksgiving and New Year's because people are AWOL, you know, they're on their vacations or sabbatical or whatever. Terrible time to be submitting a book. One year I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to try it because in my mind, I was thinking, well, if no one's submitting a book, these editors, their desks are clear and they're just waiting for a submission. And it was as though I had, I submitted a book like, you know, in those times and uh, I had never been busier. And I said to one of my colleagues who I knew was doing the same thing. I, he has a lot more experience than me. He was a publisher at Viking at one point. I said to him, have you been really busy too around this time? He said, yeah, I've been submitting books. And I, he's like, I just did a few deals. I was like, yeah, me too. So that's what happened early in the pandemic. I did, uh, I think it was like three six-figure deals for clients right within the first couple of weeks of the pandemic. And because I knew what was going through the minds of publishers, they look at their, they, they, they're not looking at books and seeing what's going on today all the time. They're thinking 12 to 18 months in the future. 
because that is the timeline it takes from the date of a signed contract to publish a book or the date of delivery sometimes. So they're looking a year or sometimes two years ahead. And they were already thinking of, well, eventually the pandemic will be behind us. It will be a brighter day. The people who are short-sighted kind of froze up with fear and stopped doing what they were doing. What, what occurred later in the pandemic was it started to catch up to publishers. So they were feeling the hurt of physical retail being closed and all, and all this stuff, all these delays, you know, publications weren't coming out in, in time and stuff like that. So um, they started changing the way in which they paid authors rather than maybe paying half on signing of a contract, half on delivery of the manuscript, they then wanted to pay maybe in fourths, like so signing, delivery, hardcover publication, paperback publication. And in windowing those payments, what the publishers were doing for themselves was they were um, helping their own cash flow. And to us, we were like, you know, the client's gonna get the money eventually. If it's going to help the publisher, sure, why not? It's not like they're paying authors less. Um, that was something we definitely noticed. We definitely saw. Uh, but no, publishers were still buying books. It was just editors were harder to reach because they weren't at their desks. Um, you know, I think some people were able to work better in the pandemic. Others, you know, it a, was a disaster for them to be working from home. You know, so I hope that those people realized that's about themselves and that in turn, publishing companies realized that about their employees, like authors weren't doing in-person events. So everything was online and everyone who had a book published in 2020, you know, very few publishers were forgiving of that. So if you were a debut author in 2020, you know, publishers should have really been grading on a curve, but not everyone did. You know, unfortunately, it was held against some people, even though it shouldn't have been. Anything that can be done about that, or it's just kind of one of those things that it is what it is? I suppose those authors have to think in the spirit of reinvention, you know, how they can kind of reinvent themselves and their books in a new and different way and kind of start over, start anew. I don't know whether that's like a pen name or something that we're working with other people or what, but, you know, at, you know, it, it wasn't, it's not easy to convince the publishers um, to say, hey, like this book could have sold a lot more if it just wasn't 2020. So uh, yeah, those are some of the things that, that were going on. Now there are still delays. Um, I got an email the other week from a publisher who said, we're taking a galley order. You know, how many ARCs, how many galleys, whatever, this book do you want? And I said, wait a minute, we haven't even seen the cover yet. And the publisher said, well, we need to get out ahead of this because it's going to take a very long time when we put this order in to get gallons. So those are the kinds of things that are, are kind of going on. 